Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome back. We're here today with John Mariani, the virtual gourmet, and my partner, John Coleman. Good to see you all. Thank you. Good to be on. And good to be seen, by the way, Art. <laughs> yes. Shall hey, I? John, uh, it's barbecue time. We've been barbecuing for quite a while, but I, I wanted to bring up, the, I discovered, actually it's been a number of years now, probably 30 years ago, but I was surprised when I discovered that there was barbecue with a mustard base, a mustard based sauce. Uh, I had never heard of that before. All barbecue for me had been, uh, um, you know, basically ketchup based with different flavors. And I was at a drag race, believe it or not, in Florida. Some folks invited me into their motor home and they had a, they had a barbecue um, with uh, a, this mustard sauce. And it, I thought it was fabulous. So tell me about how many different kinds of barbecue there really are. You've led a sheltered life. <laughs> I there are lots of regional styles. I mean, we're not talking about scores of them or, or, or dozens, maybe a dozen principal styles. <clears throat> and barbecue uh, goes back, you know, me and my historian's cap. Um, barbecue goes back to the earliest days when uh, barbacoa was a Taino Indian word. The Taino Indians were all wiped out by the uh, Spaniards when they got to the Caribbean. Anyway, it referred to a lattice work of sticks that they would cook over. It is not true, as James Beard and others would say, that it's from the French bab, a cue, which bab means the chin to the tail, cue. It, nonsense. So anyway, it comes with a Taino Indian word. And um, because America is set up for uh, everywhere for outdoor grilling, which you don't do in the cities of Europe, well, they don't do it too much in the cities of uh, America. Unless, well, but see, we have patios and we have terraces and everybody in Los Angeles has terraces and, 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 and rooftops and, and parks. Um, they don't really have that in the rest of the world. Although grilling over uh, hard woods uh, is well known just about in every every nation of the entire world. The Chinese obviously barbecue, the Koreans barbecue, and so forth. But America, which created that word barbecue, we didn't invent the technique by any stretch of the imagination, but we did lend it our own regional variations. We, I mean, yes. So um, barbecue, uh, John led off with... Uh... Uh, uh, mustard types and things like that. So we'll get into that in a moment. But barbecue, uh, my uh, son-in-law has a smoker in his backyard and he just loves it. Uh, how does that differ or is it just another way of producing a barbecue? Uh, uh, are there differences between barbecues and smokers or how are they used? Well, first of all, the, the real definition of barbecue is something that is slow cooked, okay? over hardwoods or charcoal, um, but slow cooking. Barbecuing is not throwing a hamburger on the grill. It is not even throwing a piece of steak on the grill and saying, I'm barbecuing steak tonight, okay? Uh, the dairy definition is a long, long process. Now, people go from three hours to six hours to 24 hours and get crazy, and the control of the smoke is uh, absolutely essential because if you just, I don't know about your son, and uh, what he uses, but uh, if you just smoke the hell out of that thing, you're gonna taste nothing but smoke and carbon. You're not gonna taste the, the meat. So it is a process. As the author, co-author of Grilling for Dummies, at home, you really, unless you really know your smoker and you can really modulate it to keep it down to about 250 degrees, that's where the smoking re really should take place. Uh, obviously, you throw it on a fiery grill and the charcoal and everything, and the briquettes uh, just flame up. Um, that's fine for a sear, but you got to take it way off the flames. You should, you should never go near the flames if you're going to be doing barbecue. And that's how you smoke. So and I once in Texas asked um, at Kreutz Market, which is probably the most famous central Texas um, barbecue place, um, uh, and I, I spoke to the owner, who was this old curmudgeonly guy, and I said, so I understand that you actually just removed across the street 
and you had to uh, dismantle the old uh, barbecue ovens, uh, those historic ovens. He says, no, he says, we just got rid of them uh, as we usually do. I said, what do you mean? That, isn't that all of that great grit and grime is what gives it the flavor? And he says, no, he says, we got to replace those things all the time. They wear out. We got them going, you know, 12 hours a day. After a few years, those things are unusable. So there's a myth gone right there. I said, okay, so what do you, you do? You smoke your meats like, I don't know, 12, 14 hours? He says, no, no, four or five hours. So there are a lot of myths about the longer, the better, the smokier, the better. Um, I've just got a good old Weber kettle grill. And when I want to smoke anything, first I sear it over the coals and remove it, push it to the side, uh, put the cover on with the vent open and smoke it for as long as I want to get it smoky, you know, um, no more than a couple of hours. Usually I've done it for more, but you, you, you don't have to. John, do you have a favorite uh, style of barbecue, Memphis or uh, St. Louis or whatever they, they are? Well, yeah, we should get into that at this point. Uh, so in the South, largely barbecue is based on pork <clears throat> and pork ribs. Now, they also barbecue chickens and barbecue beef and a lot of other things. But when you're saying southern barbecue, you're talking about ribs, either baby backs or, or long ribs or whatever. Um, and depending upon the region, <clears throat> the overlap is considerable that a, th there usually is ketchup or tomato in there. Okay, There is always some kind of hot seasoning in terms of chili, chili peppers. Okay, There's always salt and pepper. And from there, you get the variation. So in certain parts of North Carolina, it's a vinegar base with what I just told you. And in other parts of North Carolina, not even the Carolinas, but North Car Carolina, another section is more mustard base. Then you move on to uh, Texas, which is much more specifically about beef brisket, which is smoked for a long time. And largely, that is just seasoned with a dry rub which they also use in um, Memphis, Tennessee, uh, a dry rub uh, that never sees a wet sauce until afterwards when you're at the table if you want to put it on. But for instance, Coit's Market, your meal will be the following. Gorgeous slices of fatty smoked brisket. That's it. Oh, yes, you get a slice of white bread. And a <laughs> you don't get anything else. There's no potatoes or nothing like that. But it's just heavy. you don't need anything more. Okay, so that's that's barbecue in um, uh, in Texas. As I say, in Memphis they tend to do a dry rub. In St. Louis they tend to we do kind of talking about St. Louis ribs. They like the really big ribs rather than the baby the short back ribs. Okay, further go you go west you're going to just run into mostly southwestern seasonings of a kind you would find in southwestern New Mexican Arizona. Um, Native American cookery. Um, so those flavors are going to be absorbed and suffused into their barbecue. And then when you get to the far west, and uh, there's an amalgam there, obviously, but you start to add whack job things like pineapple juice and stuff. But then when you go to Hawaii, you know, their barbecue is done underground, as you see at a luau, and they pile the banana leaves on top of these things. And they steam them over hot rocks. Okay, so there's there really are lots of different kinds of barbecue. You know, I think that's what makes it so popular is that you can adapt it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me, you can adapt it to any flavors you like, any seasoning you like. Well, you don't want to go too far uh, because uh, you know sometimes it gets very sweet. Uh, my mother, I loved it as a kid, used to literally put um, molasses or honey on on it and it came out with this semi crisp wonderful very sweet crust which i adored if i had it right now i'd probably start weeping out of nostalgia <laughs> that's not, not my favorite uh anymore she don't she also did it in the uh in the under the broiler you know, or in the oven you know so uh, molasses of... maybe if she did molasses maybe she was from the south <laughs> no she her, south, her people south, 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 south new rochelle South Bronx. Yeah. South Bronx, exactly. Uh, you know, you mentioned uh, brisket and uh, ribs of various kinds. Uh, are there are other types of uh, meats that uh, you've seen used for barbecue with any 
regularity? Well, I mean, just about every meal. I said barbecue chicken is very, very popular. Mm -hmm. Jerk chicken, which comes out of the Caribbean, um, is done with a very, very hot seasoning on it. Uh, so you can do it with any. I mean, I've seen sweet breads and, and, and uh, you know, Rocky Mountain oysters, uh, everything thrown on there. Now, those are, those are not, uh, quote, unquote, offal. It's not the type of thing you're going to be cooking for ever. And the same with fish. You can barbecue fish <clears throat> in the Pacific Northwest, of course, salmon. Planked salmon, meaning they nail the fillet of salmon to a uh, cedar board, and they set it at angles like this over the fire in the middle, and that radiates heat and also absorbs the flavor of the cedar. So yeah, you can do it you know, that just about. Bobby, you can do that just about anything with butterflies. The butterflies that not good. Uh, just they go like that. You just can't time them out. All right, I'm hungry. Okay. <laughs> but maybe for a light barbecue, but a butterfly barbecue. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, Good. Can, well, this John, this has been interesting. One of the great things that they throughout the Middle East, you butterfly a leg of lamb. You cut that and you splay it. My wife does that all the time with Middle Eastern seasonings, and you coat it in yogurt for a couple of hours. Then you then you put it. On. That's a great dish. Wow, that sounds good. Yeah. Good. All right, well, this has been great. Uh, very interesting. I, I, we didn't get any recipes out, but it's too big a subject for recipes. There's too many variations. Well, you know, you know what you could do, John, is by Grilling for Dummies by John Mariani and Marie Rama. And there are of hundreds of recipes in there, including course, side yeah. dishes and so forth. But I should make one point. Um, barbecue, whether it's beef or lamb, should be have a pink center okay if you cook it and it's gray it has gone too far and it's going to lose the flavor of the meat you'll still have the seasonings um all around it but you're going to lose the flavor of the meat and there should be still the little kind of little rim of fat uh at the edge that does not completely dissipate that, that's great barbecue keep okay, that in mind well, uh, so uh i'll remind everybody uh, and it'll be in the notes below uh, go to Amazon for Grilling for Dummies by uh, a, a person who's using your name uh, amazingly uh, uh, in the same business as you. And uh, this is great. So if you want a barbecue, uh, you've now got resources to do it right. Oh, you know, one, one more thing. Uh, as I said, barbecue is popular all over the world. And I'm in Turkey, in Istanbul. And I go into a wine store there. They make some good wines. And the owner, I'm interviewing about wine in, in Turkey, and, and he says, moment, moment. He goes upstairs and he brings me down a copy of Grilling for Dummies, a yellow cover with black and so forth, my name on it, Marie Rama. So like that, Grilling for Dummies, but it's in Turkish. And I said, my publisher neglected to tell me that this book is being published in Turkey and probably... China in a lot of places, and I'm not getting uh, royalties out of it. So I thank them. <laughs> my phone. See, you have to go to Turkey to find these things out. Yeah. Oh, turkey legs on the barbecue, smoked, mm. very big at the country fairs. Well, all right, John. This was a finger licking good conversation, I would say. For more on celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage. Follow us on Facebook. Subscribe to us on YouTube. And tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.